Hello, I'm Gail Whiting, design consultants. I'm the owner of an interior design firm in Bedminster. I have a staff of four. I own an interior design company, design consultants in Bedminster. I'm passionate about what I do and I've been doing it a very long time and I'm past president of ASID, New Jersey chapter. Great. So it's been uh, a wonderful, wonderful ride and venture. Now how did you get into the design world? Interesting enough, when I went to college um, and got married, I started to get things for an apartment. Of course, we had no money. However, um, people started asking me if I would help them. So I was going to be a teacher, because that's what we did. And my husband was in education. He said, well, I wouldn't hire you. You obviously have a talent. Well, I'm not a gutsy person. So I said, if I have a talent, I've got to go to New York School of Interior Design. I have to learn the trade in and out so that I can be comfortable telling people or knowing that I'm going to respect their welfare, their comfort, and what I do for them is going to be right for them. So that's what I did. And I started my, well I worked as a commissioned agent for a number of years and then started my own firm six years later. The word creative to me is innovation. So it doesn't matter what project it is, what person, whether it's corporate, whether it's residential, whether it's a child's room, an entire house, new construction from the ground up, you're always having to create and be innovative about how you make it all work. What are the functions? What is the client's style? How do we put this together and do the what if? You know, I think out of the box. It's, it's not like, well, there's a rule. There's no rules in creative design. You think out of the box and you say, why not? And you make it happen. Tell us about one of your favorite projects. Well, maybe one of my most endearing projects and challenge was when someone in my husband's office had asked me if I knew a designer up in Bergen County who would be willing to take on the challenge to create a castle room for this child, six-year-old child, who was dying of cancer and had months to live. And I said, forget about Bergen County, I'll do this. So it really was a challenge because she had months to live, she had a twin brother, the mother was trying to do everything she could, and we had to find bunk beds, we had to create the castle around it, we had to redo a room. And the shippers were telling me, well, it, it's, and it had to do, I had to do this before Christmas. I had to do this by Christmas Eve. So the shippers tell me, well, it's going to get there a week after Christmas. I said, you, 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 you don't understand. So I would tell my story again. So then the shipper out in the West Coast would get it to somewhere. Then another one would say, well, we can't make it. I said, you don't understand. I tell my story again. Finally, Christmas Eve day, 10 o'clock in the morning, I check with another trucker. He said, well, we haven't taken it off the dock yet. And I said, you don't understand. <laughs> Again, so then he said, let me call you back in a half an hour. He said, I have somebody, they're gonna bring it over. I had the other truckers waiting to assemble it. And by 2.30 that afternoon, we had the room done. This child was so happy. It just touched all of our souls. Even the, even one of the uh, truckers in mid Midwest called me the next day and said, "Did you did it happen? Did you make it happen?" And I sent him photos of the wonderful child. In, in you know, it was it was just beautiful. And she lived four more months. So it was a very special thing. I'll never forget it. Embracing the future is working with what we have now, trying to plan so we can all grow together and continue what we need to do to help everybody have a wonderful environment to live in. Congratulations again and we look forward to the event on November 16th with you.